Have a nice day, everyone. We are the group 3 and we are presenting the skin infection. The skin is the largest organ of the body, which the main function of it is a protection. It protects our body from the external factors such as bacteria, fungi, viral chemicals, or temperature that cause a infection. Now, what is the skin infection? The skin infection is a condition which uh, bacteria, viruses, and fungi infect your skin and sometimes the deep tissues underneath it. In some cases, it caused by parasite invading your skin. Let's now move on to the types of the skin lesions. First, we have the macules. The flat lesions characterized by change in color of the affected skin. Next, we have the papules. Raised lesions, solid in consistency of less than 5 mm in diameter. Next, we have the plaques, flat with elevated surface with more than 5 mm diameter. Next one is the nodules, round raised lesions more than 5 mm in diameter. Next is the urticaria, annual or ring-like papules or plaques with pinkish color. Next one, we have the vesicle, the circumscribed fluid-filled lesion less than 5 mm in diameter. Next one is the bullae, Cir circumscribed fluid-filled lesions more than 5 mm in diameter. Next one is the Pustules, circumscribed extrudate field lesions. One is the purpura, the skin lesions due to bleeding into the skin. And we have two types of purpura. First, the petechiae or the less than 3 mm diameter and the ecchymosis more than 3 mm in diameter. Next is the ulcer, crater-like session that may involve the deeper layer of the skin of the epidermis and the and lastly, we have the scar, necrotic ulcer covered with the blackened scrub or crust. Good day to everyone, I'm Catherine Omamimi. Today, I will be discuss the one of bacterial skin infection. The Staphylococcus aureus is a common pathogen in human. They are gram-positive cocci, usually arranged individually in pairs, short chains, or in great light clusters. The mode of transmission, through direct contact with the person having purulent lesions from hands of healthcare or hospital workers, and through fumits like bed linens and contaminated clothing. Clinical findings, the one is folliculitis, a pyogenic infection involving the hair follicle. Number two is foreign pale, an extension of folliculitis and is also known as boil. Next is number three, carbocal, represents a coalescence of uh, foreign cells that extend into the subcutaneous tissue with multiple sinus tracts. And number four is ST or cardiolu, folliculitis occurring at the base of the eyelids. Number five is impetigo. It is common infection in young children and primarily involves the face and the lids. The last is staphylococcal, is called dead skin syndrome. It is a primarily a uh, disease found in the world borns and the young children. Laboratory diagnosis. It is includes microscope examination of gram stain specimen, gram positive cocci, and the culture ready to call them yellow colonies. The last is treatment and prevention. The treatment of choice is beta lactam, antibiotics like penicillin, and the incision and drainage of localized skin and soft tissue infection is also necessary. Bacterial skin infection. Staphylococcus epidermis is a part of the abnormal flora of the skin and commonly associated with stitched abscess, UTI, and endocarditis. It is causes infection in individuals with prosthetic devices. Streptococci or streptococcus pyogenes is a gram positive cocci arranged in pairs or in chains. Some in strain are encapsulated, which is protect them from phagocytosis and associated with severe systematic infection. In the mode of transmission, soft tissue infection is through direct contact with infected person or family. In clinical findings, pyoderma or impetigo is a purulent skin infection. It's localized and commonly involves the face, upper and lower extremities, start as vesicle and progress to pustules. It's a rupture and form honey colored grass and an enlargement of regional lymph nodes but no sign of systemic infection. Erosiplus or St. Anthony's Park is a respiratory or skin infection. Its localized raised areas associated with pain, erythema, and warm, grossly distinct from normal skin. Cellulitis is involved skin and subcutaneous tissue. It is infected in normal skin are not clearly differentiated. It must it manifest as local inflammation with systemic signs. Necrotizing fasciitis is involves deep subcutaneous tissue. It's a flesh eating or streptococcal gangrene. In it start as cellulitis, it will become tubulous and gangrenous and spread to the fascia and muscle fat. Become systematic and cause multi-organ failure leading to death. In complication, AGN and RF 
or non-supportive tip, immune-immediated complication. AGN is a commonly associated with skin infection, and the RF is usually associated with strep throat infection. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is a gram-negative bacilli arranged in pairs and are encapsulated. And an opportunistic pathogen is a common cause of nosocomial or hospital-acquired infection resistant to antibiotics. Environments are attributed to adhesins, the flagella, pili, LPS, alginate, and the toxins, the exotoxin A, or pigments, and the enzymes. In the mode of transmission of this is colonization of previously injured skin. In clinical findings commonly associated with colonization of burn wounds, and other skin infection, polycolitis, and secondary infection with acne, nail infection from immersion in contaminated water. Most common cause of inflammation of the bone and cartilage of the foot called osteochondritis is following penetrating injury. Okay, everyone, I'm Princess Diane Pillian. Our report for today is all about the infections of, of the skin. Clostridium perfringens are gram-positive bacilli that are anaerobic and rarely produce endospores. Mode of transmission is commonly transmitted by the colonization of the skin following physically trauma or surgery. Laboratory diagnosis. Diagnosis is based on microscopic detection of gram-positive bacilli in pairs and growth in culture under anaerobic condition. Treatment and prevention. Surgical wound debridement and high-dose penicillin therapy are the main approaches to the management of the disease. Bacillus anthracis are gram-positive bacilli arranged individually or in pairs or long serpentine chains giving them the characteristic bamboo fishing rod or medusa head appearance. Mode of transmission, ingestion of infected meat or milk and inhalation of aerolized spores. Clinical findings, anthrax is a disease of herbivores. There are three forms of anthrax, cutaneous, gastrointestinal, or pulmonary anthrax. Laboratory diagnosis, the peripheral blood contains a large number of bacillus anthracis, which is easily seen on gram stain. Hello everyone, I am Elizabeth Olivia Molina and I am going to discuss about superficial mycosis, tinea versicolor, also known as pityriasis versicolor, and tinea nigra. Tinea versicolor. Tinea versicolor is caused by Malassezia furfur, also known as Pterosporum orbiculare. M. furfur is a normal flora of the skin, particularly in area regions of ashes glands. The infection is worldwide in distribution, but more common in tropical regions. The lesions are irregular, discrete, hypo or hyperpigmented macules depending on the skin color of the affected individual. The lesions are scaly with a dry chalky appearance and usually appear on the face, neck, trunk, and arms. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is made by microscopic visualization of spaghetti and meatballs appearance of M. furfur with an alkaline stain 10% potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. It can also be demonstrated with periodic acid stiff stain or pus stain or hematoxylin E stain also known as HNE stain. Treatment includes application of keratolytic agents containing selenium disulfide or salicylic acid and topical antifungal drugs like ketoconazole. Tinea nigra. Tinea nigra infection is caused by Hortia wernicke, formerly Exophiala wernicke, a dimoshasus fungus that produces melanin and grows a mold producing anilis or aniloconidia. The lesions involve the palms and soles and are described as greater black, well demarcated macules. The infection is common in the tropical and subtropical regions and is more frequently seen in adolescents, young adults, and females. Diagnosis. Diagnosis is made by direct microscopic examination of skin scrapings with potassium hydroxide and culture using several textures agar medium. Treatment is similar to the treatment of tinea versicolor. Brownish lesions can be seen on the palm of patient with tinea nigra and hypopigmented lesions in patient with tinea versicolor. Good morning everyone. I am Jerry Ramon and our topic for today is all about fungal skin infection, tenuous mycosis or dermatomycosis. Cutaneous mycosis are a group of superficial fungal infection affecting the skin and its appendages, including the hair and nails. The term mycosis generally refers to an infection caused by fungi, also known as mycets, while cutaneous refers to the involvement of the skin. Hello everyone, I'm Desiree Villorian. I'm reporting about the fungal skin infection, subcutaneous mycosis. A subcutaneous mycosis is a heterogroup fungal infection that develop at the site of transcutaneous trauma. Infections initially involve the different layer of the dermis and the subcutaneous tissues that layer to the bones. There are some examples of subcutaneous mycosis like spirotrichosis, also known as rose garden disease. It is caused by the dipormic fungus. Spirotrichsenchi. This is found at the soil and decaying vegetation. This infection initially presents as a small nodules which may be later become ulcerative and postural. 
And the second sample is chromoblastomycosis. It is not characterized by mycotus nodules or plaque. The infection is indigenous and become chronic. A chromoblastomycosis, it is just a minor trauma, such as cuts or wounds due to the thorns or a wound splinter. This is, disease is most prevalent in rural parts of warmer climates, where people go barefoot. This is no human-to-human -human transmission. And the third one is mycetomia, or madura foot, by baby caused by true fungi. Humicotics mycetomia, or actinomocyte, or actinomocotic mycotomia. It fluently involved the feet and the hands. The infection is characterized by the clinical triad of tube faction, granules, and draining sinus. Diagnosis primary based on the characteristic of the granules. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, classmates. So my report is all about viral infections of the skin. Warts. Etiologic agent warts are caused by a DNA virus or human papilloma virus or HPV. The virus is capable of causing malignant transformation of the infected cells. The mode of transmission is acquired by direct contact through mucosal or skin breaks, sexual contact, and upon passage through infected white canal. There are two clinical findings of these infections of the skin. First is skin warts. This is benign or self-limiting proliferation of the skin that undergoes spontaneous resolution. These warts may be flat, dome-shaped, or plantar. These are the most common isolates from the lesions. Frequently affected sites are the hands and feet, and common among children and adolescents. The next is genital or anogenital warts, also known as condylomata acunimata or singular condylomata acumina too. Laboratory diagnosis is based on gross appearance of the lesions and histologic appearance on microscopic examinations that includes hyperkeratosis. The treatment or prevention is removal of the lesion by surgical excision, cryosurgery, electrocautery, application of caustic agents like podopilin and interferon of genital warts. Avoiding contact with infected tissue prevents spread of the infection. Herpes simplex infections. The etiologic agents are herpes simplex virus or HSV. These virus are capable of latency in the neurons and are capable of recurrent infections. Modes of transmission is in oral and genital secretions and vesicular fluid. It can be transmitted through oral contact or kissing, vomits or sharing of glasses, toothbrush and other saliva contaminated materials, sexual contact, transpacental during pregnancy and during childbirth. The clinical findings. First is gingivostomatis. This is the primary infections, primarily caused by HSV-1. It presents as vesicles that rupture and ulcerates. Lesions are seen in the buccal mucosa, palate, gingiva, pharynx, and the tongue. Most striking feature is gingivitis. Gingivostomatis is common during childhood. Second is herpes labialis, fever blister or cold sore. Represents recurrent mucocutaneous HSV infection. This is caused by HSV-1 and 2. Lesions are usually located at the vermilion borders of the lips. Lesions are vestibular and they rupture them, form an ulcer and lateral contrast. Recurrences are less severe than the primary infections and often occur on the same site. Third is herpetic with low. HSV infections involving the fingers and caused by both HSV type 1 and 2. Fourth is schema eczema herpeticum, HSV infections occurring in children with eczema. This only shows that HSV can be an opportunistic pathogen. It can also cause a superimpose infection in birds. The last is number five, herpes gladiatorum, HSV infections of the body and it usually acquired during wrestling or playing rugby. The laboratory diagnosis is based mainly on the clinical presentation of the skin infections. Diagnosis can be made by based on histopathologic changes and using the chunk smear to demonstrate the characteristics inclusion bodies known as the Caudry type A inclusions. The treatment or prevention is recommended drug is acyclovir.